Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Does size matter? That is what we are gonna look at today with the DJI RS3 Mini. By far the smallest and lightest camera gimbal that DJI has ever put out, but but being so small, can it satisfy your needs? Or maybe, maybe you need something a little bigger. I'm gonna try to help you answer that today with seven things to know about the RS3 Mini, and then, then we're gonna talk about who this gimbal is designed for. First video back of 2023. I'm, I'm super excited about this year and, and all the different things that are going on on this channel. Uh, new merch in the merch shop, these are the, the new hoodies, but, but lots, Lots to come for 2023. Okay, into this gimbal. The very first thing to know about this gimbal is, is the weight. This thing, this thing is feather light. In landscape or, or horizontal mode, this gimbal weighs in at 850 grams. And then in portrait or vertical mode, it weighs in at 795 grams. I'll explain why, why it's different in the two modes. Compare that to something like the SC2. This is the gimbal that I, I normally fly and I mean, one, you can see the size difference is massive, but the weight difference, when you are trying to hold a gimbal out for, for a long period of time, every gram matters. Okay, number two thing to know about the RS3 Mini is that while it is super lightweight and super compact, it still has a payload of 4.4 pounds or two kilograms, which means that yes, it can fly an A7S III with 24 to 70 G Master F2.0 lens and and on a gimbal especially like with this guy this is all i fly with this gimbal it's always a 24 to 70 always a7s3 so to say that i can fly this teeny tiny little gimbal with this camera um that's pretty sweet this camera and lens setup comes in at 1.6 kilograms, but I will say it's it's more the size that kind of matters here. We are pushing the limits as far as the size go. So while the gimbal can balance it perfectly, you can see no motors are on, but it is perfectly balanced in, in all the, almost almost perfectly balanced, hang on. Perfectly balanced in all axes. Um, we are, we're at like the limit, like on, on this one here, I'm pushed almost all the way back. On this one, we're pushed almost all the way over. And then on, on my bottom one, I'm pushed almost all the way back to compensate for that larger lens. So yes, it can fly the a7S III with 24 to 70 G Master lens, but I would say size-wise, this is about this is about the limit that you want to go as far as size goes. The motors are even powerful enough that that while the camera is balanced at 24 millimeters, if I was in the middle of a shot and I needed to zoom out to to maybe 70 millimeters, that is that is really throwing this thing out of balance as far as the gimbal goes. It can still it can still fly it at 70 millimeters, no problem. Obviously, that's going to significantly reduce your battery life, but but it can do it. And speaking of battery life, at number three, the battery life on this thing is 10 hours, which is absurd for such a teeny tiny gimbal. Now, now gimbal battery life, or, or the battery life that companies tell you, it's always, it's a tricky one because it's based on how aggressive you're using your gimbal. 10 hours of battery life is basically balance your camera perfectly, turn it on and, and hold it like this, you'll see 10 hours of battery life. But as soon as you start moving it around, as soon as you start running with this thing and, and you are asking a lot of those motors, you're gonna see significantly reduced battery life. I would say for most gimbals, you can expect about 60 to 80% of their claimed battery life. So while the RS3 Mini says 10 hours, I would say you can probably expect between six and eight hours, depending on how aggressively you are, you're moving this thing around and how much you're asking of those motors. But for such a tiny sub, but one kilo camera gimbal to still get six to eight hours of battery life, that's, that's awesome. Now, number four through seven is, is kind of the fun bits about this gimbal. But first, let me tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a website, sell products, run a blog, book appointments, and so many more things that Squarespace can now do. Whatever that new side project or business that you wanna get off the ground is in 2023, Squarespace can help. I've personally been a user of Squarespace for almost 10 years now for my photography business. Everything is, is through Squarespace. I built my website myself 
with their super intuitive website builders, but more importantly, I've been able to upkeep my website all along by going in and changing text, changing photos, changing design. I can do all that by myself. No web designer needed. And when I do need help, Squarespace has 24 seven support to help me out and get me back on track. Head down to the first link in the description, shoot over to Squarespace, start building your website today. And when you're ready to go live, use code David Manning at checkout for 10% off. Yeah, take that little project that you've been thinking about and at least give it an online presence. Like, Give it a, give it a boost. Squarespace can help. Okay, the RS3 mini number four thing to know about this guy is that it can do horizontal or, or landscape and vertical or portrait mode. Now it does it, it does it in a very interesting way. And, and I, I actually like it cause it's, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna turn the gimbal off and we are gonna lock all the axes and we are actually going to remove one of the arms from the gimbal. So this, this horizontal arm here, we're gonna remove this and then the camera mount is gonna mount to, to the vertical piece. It's quite simple. Unlock that, and there's a little release on the bottom and we're gonna remove this arm. Now this arm obviously weighs about 55 grams because now this gimbal is 795 grams instead of 850 grams. So a lighter weight gimbal in portrait mode. Now from this arm, we're gonna take the camera mount off just by releasing this red lever and sliding it over, pressing that quick release on top to get this guy off there. And then we're gonna mount this to the vertical arm and now, now it's just mounted like that. Now we just take the camera and slide it back into the quick release and boom, the camera is now in, in portrait mode. It takes like 15 seconds. Now you do have to rebalance the gimbal once you do this. So we'll get it here, unlock that. It's crazy how easy it is to now balance these gimbals because back in the day it was it was kind of a skill to balance gimbals. Like, like getting a big gimbal balance that was like, oh, you know how to do that? And now, now it takes like, I don't know, takes maybe a minute, less than a minute, I bet I could balance a DJI gimbal and it's, uh, it's ready to rock, portrait mode. Now the downside here is that you have to remove this arm to go from landscape to portrait mode. So obviously you're not gonna do this like quickly. Like you're not gonna be like, oh, I'm shooting a horizontal shot. I need a quick portrait shot. Let me just press the buttons or, or change something quickly. Like it does take a minute. You do have to, to rebalance the gimbal, but it can do horizontal and vertical mode. Um, and it does it really nicely. This gimbal is crazy. It's crazy that I have a sub one kilo gimbal that is flying my, my pro level camera with pro level lens. But to add to the awesomeness of this little gimbal, it has a NATO port on the side. Now it only has one NATO port, but it does perfectly fit the RS briefcase handle. So we get this guy locked on to that NATO port right there. And now boom, I have a two handed setup. This just makes things way smoother to fly a gimbal with. It's way more comfortable, especially if you're flying for like an hour at a time. But also now that I have this briefcase handle on there, I can go into an underslung mode and get those like really low to the ground shots really simply. I pretty much always have a briefcase handle on any gimbal that I'm flying. It just, I don't know makes everything better. In at number six is that the RS3 mini has Bluetooth controls to your camera. So if your camera supports this, which the A7S III does, I can control my camera from the gimbal. So right now I have these two Bluetooth paired and I can press the record button on the gimbal and I'm now, I'm now recording on my camera. Press the record button again and I can stop it. So while you're holding the gimbal, you don't have to like pull your hand off and reach up and change dials and controls. You can do everything from here. And then on this little front wheel, you can set that to different things. I have it set for ISO and I can control that. I can control shutter speed. I can set that dial to be different parameters on my camera. So while I'm running around like this, I can control everything. Uh, down here and I don't have to keep reaching up and grabbing the camera controls. And then the number seven thing to know about the DJI RS3 mini is the price. This gimbal being, being sub one kilogram, being able to fit into a small pocket in your backpack, being able to whip it out and then fly an A7S III with 24 to 70 millimeter lens on it. This, this whole thing comes in at $369, which is crazy because even like 10 years ago, getting shots like this, getting those cinematic movements, those those really smooth gimbal shots, it would cost thousands of dollars to be able to get that shot. And now now pretty much anybody with a budget of 369 bucks can, can go out and get something like this, have it with them and just get some absurd, look how smooth that is. Just beautiful shots 
for 369 bucks. That breaks my damn brain. Uh, all right, that is the seven things to know about this gimbal. It's a it's a great gimbal. Like once you know those seven things, you, you pretty much know everything you need to about this setup. Okay, who is this gimbal for? I see I see three main use cases or, or three people that this gimbal is like perfect for. The first one obviously being uh, travel. Anytime you are going out traveling, this would be an amazing gimbal to take with you. It's so damn small. Hang on, let's check this out. So when you kind of like lock it up, like more of like a folded position, look how little this gimbal becomes when you like fold it up and break it down like this thing can you see how how teeny tiny that like compared to what we've all been using for so long um this is tiny I feel like i could fit this in my hoodie oh easily a pro camera gimbal that you can uh you can fit in your hoodie pocket <laughs> Did I, did I mention that these hoodies are now on the merch shop and available? There's a there's a link below, check them out. Uh, the number two person that I think this gimbal is for is someone kind of more like me where I need gimbal shots like here and there, like sparsely mixed into these videos. Do I want some gimbal shots? Something smooth where I'm like filming a product or I'm whatever I'm filming. I usually only need a few shots. So for me to go out, I mean, this this is the SC2. This has made the most sense for me just budget wise. It's not huge. It's obviously not compact like that, but it's not huge. This has made the most sense to have with me, but but now that I have this, I honestly don't know that I'm gonna reach for this very often because like I said, I'm the person that just goes, I need like maybe three or four shots during a shoot. This is just fantastic to be able to pull out, throw that camera on it, get those shots, and then toss this thing away. And then number three, the, the people this is for, it's obviously for people with more compact cameras. Yes, it can fly the A7S III with 24 to 70, but this is kind of the limit size-wise. Anything this size or smaller, so if you've got like the ZV-E10 or A6600, even like the FX30 would be a perfect camera to throw onto this setup. But I would even go down to like, like a ZV-1. Like if you got like a ZV-1 pocket camera, you grab this gimbal for 369 bucks and you are gonna get some insane shots with that little tiny camera. And then cons for this thing, like any sort of limitations, uh, it's it's really just a size thing. There's there's no limitations as far as its performance. It performs awesome. It's super easy to use. It flies just as smooth as something like this. But obviously, like I said, this is your uh, your kind of size limit here. Like you're pushing the limit here. This camera in here feels like nothing because you can obviously run a lot more payload on a larger gimbal. But if you have this camera or smaller, gosh, I just. It just feels like the camera gimbal that most people should probably be going out and buying. Okay, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say at $369 at the sub one kilogram mark. Is this the perfect travel gimbal or maybe even like entry level gimbal? This this might be the gimbal, like I said, that most people should be going out and picking up. Let me know uh, what you guys think of this setup down in the comments below and I will see you guys soon. Lots more to come on this channel this year. Uh, I've got I got big plans for stuff. All right, I'll see you guys soon. People getting into videography these days, they just don't know how good they have it. To have cameras like this and gimbals like this for for prices like this. <sighs> Ha, 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 ha.